Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. In this video, I'd like to talk about how uh, entrepreneurs working with Stable Diffusion and other open source models like Dreambooth um, have recently, or at least people have started to notice, uh, just kind of lost the plot in terms of understanding who they're targeting with these tools and these offerings, uh, and more importantly, what they're charging for it. So the focus of this video is specifically with uh, Dreambooth and this crazy screenshot. I, I, they haven't said where it's from, but this crazy screenshot that shows um, a $200 price for 300 digital versions of yourself. So basically someone who's just training off of uh, 40 photos provided to them uh, in Dream Booth, and then mimicking a person uh, in a number of styles. I have some theories as to where this has come from. There are some people that are surprised this has cropped up now, and I'm not super surprised, to be frank, but let's get into it. So the basis of a lot of this, I think, has started and, and just stemmed from Peter Levels, who, uh, curiously, about two weeks ago, was just starting to look into a lot of this like text-to-image technology. So he built a tool that was actually paid, that uh, would generate uh, furniture and fill an image with that or fill like a, and then style it a certain way. He has recently released a tool that will generate um, 20 photos or I think, yeah, 100 AI avatars with 20 images that you provide. And he has a website here. And this is very I mean, indicative of his work. So a lot of his work is quick, dirty stuff that pretty much works. Uh, what's curious is if you follow his Twitter, he's quickly running into a lot of serious infrastructure challenges, which if you ask me is like the real challenge with deploying a lot of this stuff. But yeah, so we'll jump into this soon, but look at this. So 100 AI avatars for $40. Um, ironically, that is more expensive than this post uh, for something, uh, a similar service. They don't really say Dream Booth. Yeah, they, they, they pretty much allude to the fact that this is for Dream Booth. And you can see here that they have um, $35, $45, and $200 options. You know, they're, there's a lot to unpack here, but to start off with, we have to think about what problems are being solved, which of those problems provide value, and then also empirically, like what value each of those problems has. So we've seen a lot of kind of low-hanging fruit attempted to be addressed by entrepreneurs because um, they look at this and they say, oh, great, like the model's free. I can just do whatever I want with it, you know, within reason and the license. Um, and it's curious because some engineers have looked at this and said, oh, like I will target technical people who are actually using this and I will solve low hanging technical fruit. So you basically, you can click and start. And as long as you still have some technical knowledge to understand how to use these models, then, you know, have a field day. So automatic 1111 is a great example. Granted, he's not charging for it, but if you really want to go look, there are plenty of people who are basically just forking automatic 1111's work and charging, uh, you know, a recurring revenue model like five dollars a month or like a one-time fee of, you know, forty dollars, through some uh, quickly drawn up page with the Stripe link, and it, it's all pretty interesting. It's it's all pretty much still the wild west. And what's interesting is. The, I think the reason we've ended up here with these tune models, and it's crazy to look at this because even two and a half weeks ago, the idea of um, quickly generating your own images with uh, bespoke inputs was a pretty hard thing to do. And like now you can just go, not, granted not with Dream Booth, um, you'll be able to do that soon. You can, you can do that with automatic 1111. Um, like right just straight away and it's interesting because now these entrepreneurs have really latched on to the idea that uh, Training a custom model and then tweaking it to get what you want takes a lot of time and they figured well I'll, I'll charge someone for that because then they can just give me money and in 12 to 18 hours We will give them a result that they'll probably like what's curious is these prices are eye gouging, right? Uh, and I think it's kind of ridiculous for those of us who are even pretty technical, even acknowledging that most of the people who watch this channel are inherently very technical. And even those who are on the less technical side um, definitely are adept with, you know, installing CUDA drivers and doing weird things with Linux and Windows, um, even if they're not programming on a daily basis, or if, or if they don't have, you know, a pretty intricate knowledge of Python. But what's interesting with the products that have been coming out now, or the offerings from these entrepreneurs, is they're not really infrastructure based. Prior, a lot of it was just Someone saying, I don't want to deal with running a server. Can you just provide a click and go model for me as an engineer to provide input and get something back? And that's why um, API tools like the Dolly API and like a number of other things have ended up that are APIs, right? These entrepreneurs have figured out that the place that might have even more money is targeting people who are not technical, but still want to use this and are too lazy to understand how to optimize it, which is why 
you know, unpopular opinion, I think some of these prices are, could be close to what you would fetch otherwise, right? Uh, also, when we start to think about what certain GPUs will actually allow you to do. Because for instance, like you're going to need a pretty insane GPU to be upscaling to 4K. Um, and granted, this product offering is pretty vague because like they don't mention if all 300 digital versions are 4K upscaled. But nonetheless, the real value that they're providing here is there's like a person going through and doing this for you and picking out the best images. Clearly that's subjective, and I think it's kind of weird you'd pay for that, because the whole idea is, you know, get what you want and then move on. And $200 for 300 images, even if a few of them were upscaled, like you can go on AWS and get a spot instance and upscale to 4K all you wanted for, you know, all, all of $8. And $200 is nearly the cost of a GPU that's approaching good, good enough that you could just run this. Um, like that's getting close what you'd pay for an RTX 3060 with 12 gigs of RAM, which myself and I think a lot of other channels have pretty much figured out is like, that is the best bang for your buck GPU you can get. And I think the important thing here is that we, no one really knows what can be charged for this yet. There were like Jason Kalkanis uh, in his podcast, I had a really interesting segment where he said like, no one even knows how to price um, open source companies like this yet. And we have a a coverage of that in another video that the question is, you know, what is this worth? And then what is someone's time worth like clicking through all this stuff? And there's definitely a range. And the ironic thing is Peter Levels, he's, this, this guy has boatloads of money and he has gotten pretty close, I think, to pricing this sort of reasonably. $40 to me is a, is a ripoff. And what's funny is this was $20 two days ago. So... Um, clearly there's a process of sort of figuring out what people are willing to pay that is going on. Uh, for, for reference, I would not pay $200 for 300 digital versions of myself. Uh, if this was a custom model to do something like very specific, maybe I would consider paying that much because then I'm just saving time. Yeah. And, and what's crazy is even with this, like this middle deal here, I think still provides more value than uh, Peter Level's product that gives you AI avatars. And th the question is why people even want these AI avatars in the first place. Like, are they using them for dating apps or like what, what's going on there? And, you know, there have also been some follow-up posts on Reddit where people are questioning, like, are you overpaying with, with even some of these hosted products? Because there, there's those ho hosted GPU instances that are, you know, $30 a day. And it's kind of crazy that there are still ridiculous margins built into a lot of these tools. And what's curious to me is the speed at which a lot of this is happening in terms of technical progress. But in terms of pricing progress, I don't think we've really made any progress. Um, because even two weeks ago or three, three weeks ago, when Peter Levels had another project that was this, you know, generating furniture dynamically bit, even that was priced kind of ridiculously. I mean, it was like $30 for one image, which is ridiculous in, in my opinion. And then the funny thing is he, he'll still get on Twitter and complain about, you can see he does it here, that GPUs are really expensive. And let's see, he, he mentions, uh, yeah, here we go. So by using this site, you agree to the terms of service. We don't allow refunds because we incurred high GPU costs to generate your picks. So clearly the optimization challenge going forward for all of these companies is what are you paying for GPU costs? And I have a video coming out soon where I really go in deep about what this will mean for GPU markets, um, buying NVIDIA GPUs going forward. No one cares about AMD GPUs. And uh, yeah, so another really interesting thing I wanna call out here is I've been digging into Upwork and I've seen very similar posts to this. And if you, if you look at this, um, basically this guy, Wes Wagner, covers some uh, stability AI stuff. And he, what he's saying here is most of the stable diffusion and Dreambooth projects running in the cloud are using the same API at, uh, which is Astra AI. In my opinion, it's far better than uh, Dolly's API, just in its, its tooling. Um, it says last week they charged $5 per fine tune of a model. Now they're charging 20. So this company providing infrastructure figured out we can 4X what we're charging, even though we're probably already operating at a pretty decent margin and people will still pay for it. And what's crazy is hours later on Upwork, and I saw this, it is even in GitHub and like people just begging for this. Um, they said, if Upwork listings are giving us any indication or hint, we're about to see several other API services soon. And this is on uh, November 2nd. 
Uh, and if you look at these posts, uh, it's people who are probably not senior engineers or people who've done a lot of ML ops. And uh, it's funny because I, my argument with AI stuff with people who are saying like, who are engineers who are like, I want to learn AI stuff. Um, the funny thing to me is more of the challenge, um, technically, in my opinion, is ML ops and how you deploy infrastructure around this stuff. I don't think it's really about how you create a model that does amazing things. Like that takes next level PhD knowledge that I admittedly do not have. But to me, the really interesting challenges to be addressed here are just deploying the stuff at scale, having it work, and then having it be profitable. So yeah, in this Upwork post, these people are saying, I'm looking for someone who can set up Dream Booth slash Stable Diffusion on an API endpoint and support it long term, which is a crazy ask. And uh, this input is a long list of image URLs hosted on S3 and a list of prompts and a callback URL. Process trains model using Dream Booth, then runs inference using Stable Diffusion process uploads resulting images to S3, process thing call. And here's another one saying, uh, looking for someone who can run Dreambooth on a server that I can call as an API. The, th the funny thing is like a lot of this infrastructure in time will probably just be churned open, open source code. It's curious how like the, the people wonder why the pricing gets nuts. And it starts with the infrastructure and the APIs are going on. Uh, Cause not, I mean, most web developers have no clue how to do this kind of tooling, period. And uh, it's not because they're dumb, it's just because it's not what they focus on. And admittedly, it's a very hard thing to get right. And uh, yeah, so the pricing starts there. And then on the other end, it's what these entrepreneurs think people are willing to pay for it. And at the end of the day, it's whatever the laziest person is willing to shell out for this. And it's whoever has the, the loudest voice and the loudest audience. And that's why I look at, at Peter Levels, because he, one, has a very technical audience. So they're very sensitive to if they think they're getting ripped off. And he's also pretty prominent on Twitter. So if he's adjusting prices a certain way, I think there's a certain this reasoning and a certain accuracy to that price movement um, based on a non-technical audience consuming these products. Now for me, would I pay for any of this? No. Uh, I would rather sit down for an hour, use my RTX 3080 10 gig, which admittedly is what I use for most of my stable diffusion stuff. I have a 3090 and some A5000s I use, but I actually farm those out um, for some stable diffusion workloads um, that are not mine. So just uh, if you want to work on something, let me know, because I think there's some really cool stuff to work with. And uh, to be fair, uh, a lot of my work now uh, as an engineer out of outside of work is going towards Stable Horde, which again, you should check out. It's really exciting. And uh, yeah, for those of you who really want to get into the economics of this, basically what this is called is a market penetration. So, and pretty much what market penetration is, is the process of different people offering effectively the same thing. And then customers based on who is aware of which offering, um, deciding what they're willing to pay for it. And kind of a, a assuming the product's uh, features stay basically the same, waiting to see where the race to the bottom goes. There's only a limited window of this right now. And I think it's disingenuous to compare uh, something like Mid Journey or Dali to this. Um, Dali can do similar things to this. That's not a feature that's available to the public yet. Yeah, I mean, the irony is if you even had, yeah, if you, if you had an RTX 3080, you could pretty much just not considering the 4K upscaling, you could do everything that these products uh, are <laughs> charging for. And um, nonetheless, Dream Studio, nonetheless, Dream Booth is a really incredible bit of software. And uh, it's, you know, it has its differences from Stable Diffusion, but it's it's effectively a very similar model. I think the next round of this we will see are um, paid upscaling APIs, since those take an amount of processing that, like, that many people don't have access to. I think it's a nice mix of um, a very technical and non-technical audience. Um, because generally with product stuff, it's those two audiences are very hard to mix and they both present different challenges to an engineer or even just like the notion of what the product is. So curious what you guys think. Um, would you pay $200 to get 300 images of a, a tuned model of yourself. Um, personally, I wouldn't. Let me know what you would do in the comments. And as always, I hope you learned something.